Hi, second and third graders. My name is Sabrina Kovacs, and I am a teacher for Seattle Public Schools. I'm really excited to be able to provide some math lessons for you this week. Before we get started, I wanted to tell you a couple of things. First, this video is for second grade math and third grade math. We're going to start talking about mental math strategies, and that's something that second graders need to be practicing this week but third graders should also practice these skills as well. For third grade, I'm going to be talking about comparing fractions using visual models. You might think those things don't have anything to do with one another, but they actually do. Why? Because of the list that you see on this first slide. It requires that we use and employ some of our important mathematical practices. So while you're listening and learning today, it's important that you make sense of problems, that you're attending to precision, and that you're modeling with mathematics. And I'll explain all that a little bit more as I continue with the lesson. But we've, before we begin, I'd like you to gather a few things. First, get some pencils and paper. And also, if you'd like, you can get some colored pencils or crayons and uh, an eraser if you need. So get your things, pause the video, and then when you're ready to resume learning, you can hit play again. Welcome back. So in this week's packet for second and third graders, there is an activity or a game, if you will, called Step Numbers. And this is all about using mental math for addition. What are step numbers? Well, step numbers are a way that we described numbers that are consecutive. What are consecutive numbers? Well, you have to know the meaning of the word consecutive. And here is where our first mathematical practice comes in that I mentioned earlier, making sense of problems. When we read the directions of something or we look at a problem, we don't always know what to do right away. In this case, you might not know what consecutive means. You'll see in the example on the slide that consecutive just means something that is in order or things that always follow in the same order. So for example, the numbers one, two, three, four are in consecutive order because three always comes before four and four always comes after three when we're counting whole numbers. Another example is the ABCs, A, B, C, D, E. E always comes after D and before F if we're talking about the English alphabet. And if we're talking about the days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, those are always happening in a consecutive order. Monday always happens before Tuesday, which always happens before Wednesday. I think you understand what consecutive means. Now that you've had a chance to look at your packet, you know that this activity is asking you to add two or more consecutive numbers and try and determine or figure out if there is a pattern in the sums, the answer to any addition problem. So we're going to start out by being careful and doing things in order. I'm going to start with the number one. One plus two equals, whoops, three. And that math fact I know. So I don't really need to use any strategy for that. Then I'm going to start with two. Two plus three is five. Okay, that's another math fact I know. Then I'm gonna start with, whoops, three plus four equals, so that's going to be two more because three is one more than two and four is one more than three. So then the answer has to be two more than five, and that's seven. Now I've already identified a pattern, but I wanna make sure that I'm correct. So I'm gonna keep going. Four plus five equals, hmm, that's one less than five plus five. So that's nine. And then five plus six, equals 11. I know that because it's one more than 10. Now I'm gonna stop here and take a look at my answers. 
I'm going to circle them just so I can really be very careful about what numbers I'm looking at when I'm trying to figure out a pattern. So we've got three and five and seven and nine and 11. Hmm. Do you see a pattern? You are also being asked to add step numbers using three numbers. So again, I'm going to be careful and precise and make sense of my problem, remembering that consecutive means numbers that come in order. So I'm again going to start with two plus three plus four. And this time I'm gonna use some of my mental math strategies that I've learned. So I know that two plus three is five and five plus four is nine. Then I'm going to do three plus four plus five. And you know, when I see three plus four, I always just automatically think seven. So I'm going to think about seven plus five and that's 12. And then I'm gonna do a couple more and see if I can notice any patterns. So hmm, I started with two, now three. This time I'm starting with four. Four plus five plus six. And when I see that, I automatically see a 10. And I know that I need to add five and 10, and that's going to give me 15. And I'm gonna do one more. Six plus seven. Oh no, I made a mistake. That's okay though. I skipped five. See, I started with two, and then I started with three, and then I started with four, and now I'm going to start with five plus six plus seven. And when I look at five plus six, I know it's just one more than five plus five. So that's 11 plus seven, and I know that that is 18. So we've got nine and 12 and 15 and eight. Do you see a pattern? So now that you've seen me do some examples, this would be a good time for you to pause and do some on your own. You've also been given a challenge where you are being asked to find step numbers in different ways and also to add more than three consecutive numbers at a time. As you complete this task, use the pencils and paper that I asked you to grab at the beginning of the lesson. I also would encourage you to use different colors so it helps you keep track of what you've done. And for me, I know that when I use different colors, it can help me see patterns. You can either pause the video and do the work, or you can keep going. In addition to keeping track of the list that you've made and all the addition that you've done, you can also use the hundreds chart that's in your packet. By coloring these numbers in, you'll definitely be able to see some interesting patterns in step numbers. Second graders, you've also got some tasks in your packet that are asking you to add three digit numbers. This is a great time for you to be practicing and strengthening those mental math skills. And if we pay attention to place value, we can add numbers without using pen or paper or pencils or computers or anything. So let me show you an example of what I would do if I had to add 816 plus 233. The first thing I would do is I would look at the numbers in the hundreds place and I would think to myself, oh, 800, oh, that's not a great color. Let me change the color. 800 plus 200 is 1,000. I know that. So I would hold on to that 1,000. I've already added the 800 and the 200. And then I would move over to the next digit in the tens place and I would add 10 plus 30. So 10 plus 30 is 40, and then I would add 1,040, and I know that that's 1,040. And then the last thing that I would do is add the digits in the ones place. So I would add six and three and get nine. And when I add nine to 1,040, I would get 1,049. So as you are working through the packet and adding numbers in the hundreds place, 
really challenge yourself to not write anything down, pay attention to that place value, and solve those problems using mental math. So place value, place value, place value. I know you've heard so much about place value from your teachers since kindergarten. As you are adding three digit numbers and practicing mental math, keep that place value in mind. Third graders, you also have the same activity in your packets this week. Please practice adding step numbers and if you find it simple and you want an extra challenge, make sure you do the challenge and perhaps you can think of other ways to make step numbers something that is challenging for you and interesting to think about as third grader. Once you're done with step numbers, third graders, what we've got in our packet this week is comparing fractions using visual models. Third graders, you've had a lot of experience comparing whole numbers. Think about fewer than, less than, more than, greater than. I know you've had a lot of experience with that in math class. Now that we're moving into fractions, fractions are numbers too, we also have to compare which fraction is larger or smaller than the other one. So, on the first example, the two pink bars, I have drawn two bars that are the same size, and I've cut them into the same number of pieces. They're cut into three pieces into thirds. On the top pink bar, one out of three have been shaded, or one third has been shaded. And on the second bar, two out of three have been shaded, or two thirds have been shaded. When we look at the visual models, it's pretty clear to see that two thirds is more than one third or one third is less than two thirds. We can also see that one third is one third less than two thirds. The bottom number on our fractions is the denominator. And you will see on the example that I have one third and two thirds next to those bars. So when we're comparing like fractions, fractions that have the same denominator, Sometimes we don't necessarily need a visual model. All we need to do is look at the numerator to see which is more. However, sometimes we have to compare unlike fractions or fractions that have different denominators or amounts that come from the same whole, but those amounts are cut into different sized pieces. So on the green example, the top bar has been cut into four pieces or fourths and two out of four or two fourths have been shaded. And on the bottom green bar, it's been cut into six pieces or sixths, and two out of six of those pieces, two sixths of those pieces have been shaded in. This is where we have to be a little more careful because we have to pay attention to the numerator and the denominator. We can see that in both examples, two pieces have been shaded in, but then we have to look at the denominator to determine which pieces are larger, which pieces are smaller. Using a visual model, it's pretty clear to see that two-sixths is less than two-fourths. In your packet this week, most of the comparing fraction tasks that you've been given already have visual models where you just have to shade in the parts in order to figure out which fraction is more or less than the other. There are three problems. I think there are just three where it doesn't give you the visual model. So you've got two choices here. You can be like the little owl that I've put on the top and use a straight edge or a ruler and pencil and paper and practice drawing holes and cutting them into pieces. You might think this isn't very fun or you might wonder why would you do that when you could use an app or the computer to create holes, but I do think it's really good practice for second and third graders and fourth and fifth graders, in fact, to draw things on their own and practice cutting them up into pieces. It promotes really good hand-eye coordination and it helps your understanding of fractions altogether. If you don't decide to do this, you can go to a website called the Math Learning Center and there you can create all kinds of cool visual models like the one that I've uh, put underneath the link. And you can use um, boxes like bar models to compare fractions. And you can also create 
circular diagrams to create visual fraction models. Whatever you decide to do, we'd like for you to practice comparing fractions this week using visual models. So that wraps up the content for this week's lessons in second and third grade math. I'd like all of you to remember the math practices that we started with at the beginning. Make sense of problems. Don't just rush right in. Make sure you understand what the problem is asking you to do. Attend to precision. So second graders, when you're adding, make sure that your sums are correct. And third graders, if you're drawing those fraction models, um, be precise. Use a ruler. Make sure that your holes are equal to each other before you compare fractions and model with mathematics. So use what you know to figure out what you don't know. I hope you have a great week. I've really enjoyed putting this together for you and um, take care of yourselves, be safe and have fun. Thanks second and third graders.